guys, Elle here. Today we're gonna do the Two of Wands. Moving right along. So this is this is a card that actually, it, it gave me a hard time for a really long time. Uh, it's one of maybe a handful of cards that I feel like wherever you, you turn to for, for meanings, you, you end up with uh, opposing meanings. You end up with a lot of contradictions. And I think that that's really because this card like all the other cards, but especially this card, it, it really is talking about a little bit more of, of a journey that you take. Um, it's almost like you start one place and you end in another place. So depending on, on what side of that journey that, that you're looking at, you can come up with very contradicting meanings of the card. I'm not just talking about upright and, and reversed. So in the previous card, we had we had the Ace of the Ace of Wands, right? You had gone back to the beginning, back to the start there, and started out on on a new path. You had this burst of, of energy and uh, and focus, and decided to set out in a new direction, basically. Uh, and what happens when you set in a new direction and end up in this this uncharted territory, almost a, a new place uh, that you're unfamiliar with? is it leads to this confusion and this this feeling of being lost. It's uncomfortable not knowing what to do and, and exactly where to go because you've never really been here like this before. Um, it's It can be painful, it can be uncomfortable, it, and you end up maybe thinking to yourself, did I make the wrong choice? Should I really be here? I don't like this feeling. Um, it's like once you get through those those that uncomfortableness almost, you you realize that this is what transforms you. This is how you grow without being uncomfortable and in pain and, and feeling all this friction and, and, and all that. Uh, you don't grow. So so once you've come out of the other side almost, you feel like you have been transformed. You feel in control. You now have like dominion over yourself um, because you're, you're going through this bit of a journey here. So this card is really all about harnessing your, your personal power. You're learning how to use that fire that was born in the Ace of Wands. Um, and, and how you're using it is you're, you're, you're planning and you're preparing and you're structuring and you're looking out at, and, at your resources and seeing what you have to work with. And that is definitely a huge part of even the number two, that planning and that preparing. Um, I, don't, I don't have a video where I just talk about uh, you know, the, the suits in general and numerology and the tarot in general. So until I, I get a video up about that sort of stuff in general, I do have a video called Understanding the Mary L up right now where I talk about all those things just and how it relates to that particular deck. But it does cover like basic numerology in the tarot and, uh, and I talk about the suits in general too. So that might help. Um, I don't want to go through all that, that sort of stuff in these videos just yet. But just remember that the, the wands in general have a lot to do with you know, what you're passionate about um, and, and how you spend your time, what you're working on. Uh, that's why they can have even more to do with uh, your, your work life, your career life sometimes than even, even the suit of discs can. So here at the Two of Wands, you know, when you're, you're preparing uh, for, for your future, preparing to, to make a headway towards your goal, whatever that may be, whether it's a, a creative endeavor, a, project, a relationship, whatever it is that, that you're passionate about, um, even even your spiritual journey, you know, using your energy body, because that has a lot to do with the suit of wands too. Um, it can you can it can have this feeling of, oh shit, what did I get myself into? It's it's overwhelming. It can it can feel like uh, like an uphill battle. And you really want to. You want to push on through that uncomfortable feeling. You want to push on through that <laughs> that nausea, even that you feel when you're in uncharted territory, um, because the goal, hopefully, if it does outweigh the costs, is worth it. It's what's important to you. It's what you're passionate about. Uh, so inherent, even in this card, I think, is is it worth it? And are my goals? Um, you know, lofty on one hand, are they, are they higher, are they elevating, are they positive? Um, and then on the other hand, 
Are they leading me downwards? Are they selfish? Are they materialistic? You have to look at, at that too with this card. So I think that these two extremities, you know, the, the two wands uh, also need to be united. You know, you have to understand both sides of the experience, both sides of the situation in order to move forward uh, correctly. Because that's how you grow, that's how you transform, by combining these two opposite but complementary aspects, the yin and the yang. I mean, the power of this card is definitely twofold. It's, it's invigorating on one hand and exciting, but feels almost destructive on the other. And that, that negative side of this card really isn't negative, you know, it's just, it's part of the process. Whenever you start something new, uh, or, or make a big change. You know, you leave behind an area of life in which you've already been successful. Mary Kay Greer says about this card that there's a curious paradox here. In the midst of achievement, there's a seeming melancholy or discontent. And I think that the way through that is to, or the way that you, you prepare yourself and, and plan how you're going to move forward is 100% to reconcile these, these two wands, the two aspects of this, of that, that solar fire energy, that universal energy that we tapped into in the Ace of Wands. You know, I think the advice with this card always is to step out of your comfort zone. Um, and go through it, experience both sides, and understand both sides of that, of that fire energy. Now if the project that you're working on here is, is working on an aspect of yourself, um, like how we said in the, in the Ace of Wands, there's these, these virgin parts of yourself that, that require maturing and, and need to be worked on. Here in the Two of Wands, this is where you're naming that new identity, you're claiming it. And then the same idea that we just talked about is true here also. Once you've worked out the inherent um, oppositions, the inherent dualities, you know, how it's uncomfortable and disorienting and there's a lot of friction on one hand and, and all that goes with those sort of ideas um, and how it's painful. And then on the other hand, how, how it just feels so right and there's enthusiasm and drive and passion and love. So you, you've worked that out, then you can come together and move forward with a, a clarity, you know, with a singularity of purpose, of vision, of, of the goal. There's even an aspect of imposing your, your will, which has a lot to do with the suit of, of fire also, or the suit of wands, imposing your will over your passion and going into that unfamiliar place. It's those first thoughts, the first steps of the creative process, uh, where you're planning, where you're preparing, where you're structuring. Okay, let's take a look at the, the Two of Wands reversed for a second. Um, it can definitely have these, these feelings of being lost or, or feeling stuck, you know, unable to reconcile those two, oppose, uh, those two opposing, opposing viewpoints um, or even which path to take. Nothing's clear, nothing's prepared for. Um, Self-doubt is huge with this reversal um, and not necessarily in such a negative way. Um, like we said, this card is, is definitely a journey um, and, and those doubts can be part of, of that initial setting out into uncharted territory, right? But, you know, a, a hesitation to go further um, with what you started uh, is, is, is big. But upright then is where, where you're, you're more committed, you're more assertive. Um, you can see the goal, you, you understand that you're going to get through this and there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You're still a little bit stuck in, in the darkness and, and can't see a plan or a path um, when the card is reversed. At least for me. You know, you are confused as to, as to where to go. Now, one of the other things I always loved about the Two of Wands reversed, um, and I've seen it in lots, of, in lots of books in different places and things like that, is this idea of dropping the ball. And you can see he's holding, at least in the Rider Waite Smith, he's holding that, that globe in his hand. So when you turn it upside down, it's like he's, he's dropped the ball. Um, and I don't always agree with um, certain ideas that like literally come right out of the picture of the Rider Waite Smith cards. I think sometimes they lead people down weird little paths. Um, but that one I think just fits so, so perfectly with the meaning of the card.
So when they say, you know, dropping the ball, it's like you've, you, you're in this state of confusion and, and hesitation, like we just said, right? And then another person or other people looking, looking in on you in this state, um, they're, they're left waiting on you, you know, because you're not taking any action. You're a little lost in confusion here. Um, so, so to them, it feels like you've, you've dropped the ball, you know, especially in a situation um, where you're starting a new business or a new project or something and you're working with other people. Um, this, that's what they're seeing. Uh, they're not seeing this whole rest of the journey that's sort of going on inside where you're working out all these, all these issues. Um, they're just seeing this complete halt, this stoppage, uh, and they, they don't like it very much. You done drop the ball. <laughs> you know, that, that inner confusion that you're feeling here is, is showing to others. Others can see that, you know, that, that you are confused. Um, and then they, in, in turn, are confused by you. Also, when, when you're talking about this card upright, and especially if you're talking about someone else in that situation, it can mean like that they are going to uphold their end of the deal. You know, they're not going to drop the ball. Um, you can rely on that person. Um, you know they've 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 come through that that confusing part of this journey reconciled those opposites and moved on uh, and they are good to go <laughs> you, know, you can trust them they'll uphold their end of the deal and they are committed um, it can even just simply indicate um, the two of wands reversed that that you still need more time to to get through this journey to to see things clearly and, and make up your mind on on where you want to go I think even the, the upright of this card can have um, some negative connotations when you've, you've taken things too far. Um, you know, if you haven't fully reconciled <laughs> both sides and you're, you're just really like jumping the gun and you're not seeing all the, the, the sort of negative aspects and you're really in control and really, really pushing, um, I think that's when you get some of those keywords like dictatorship and um, maybe even being oppressive to others and not listening to others because you're just full force with this energy behind you, go, go, go. Um, that you haven't really taken the time here in the Two of Wands. I think this issue can come up upright or reversed. Um, I tend to go there more actually when it's upright, depending on the surrounding cards and stuff. But um, yeah, that can definitely, definitely be an aspect of this card too. <laughs> Watch out for that. Listen to others and... Um, and, and don't be, you know, so, so forceful with others. Those are, those are the qualities of a good, of a good leader, I think. Um, and a lot of people associate this, this idea of leadership uh, with this card, and with good reason, I think. I think that that makes sense here, depending on, on the situation that you're talking about in a reading. Another way that this has come up for me, re reversed anyway, is that when you're talking about more creative endeavors, um, which usually you are with, with this card, but um, as opposed to, you know, sexual passions and your libido and the more spiritual work, but like actual creative projects and things like that, um, is that this is where the, the intellect and all your, your thought processes really can get in the way of that creative process. Um, Overanalyzing, overthinking things, um, being stuck between these, these two opposing viewpoints almost um, can can leave you feeling, again, stuck and, and in this place of hesitation and unable to, to move forward with your creativity. Like a creative block. You know, you really do experience this, this Two of Wands journey in every aspect of your life, although it seems to play itself out a little bit differently at every level. Um, you really do go through it. Um, you experience it in your sex life with the wands can, can have a lot to do with also. You know, this could be the place where you're, you have this hesitation about having sex for the first time or, or being with a new person for the first time. All you go through that, that range of experience. You know, for me also, when this card is upright, usually uh, it can it can have <laughs> what did I say before? Like, um, <laughs> jump out into uncharted territory, take that step is um, is definitely a bit of advice with this card. But it's also um, this idea of fake it till you make it. I like that with this card because I think you're always going to have these, uh, especially at first, these doubts and this confusion and this fear. Um, but 
you know, if you can see, if you know that that the ultimate goal is is very much worth it, like it outweighs the the costs of feeling this way and the embarrassment, the humiliation you might experience um, when you put yourself out there and and plan this 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 amazing path that you're going to head down. Um, you know, you, you just gotta power through. Use that that ace of wands energy and fake it till you make it. You know, the wands are, are fire. They are Shakti energy. They are the means by which you get what you want. Um, one more thing for the card reversed. I know I said it already that the card can have a lot to do with, you know, higher, loftier goals and lower earthly aspirations or whatever and comparing those two. Um, I think sometimes when it's reversed, it can be leading me to feel like your your aspirations are a little bit lower, you know, that um, uh, they're lower impulses and, and what you're planning and where you're going is not necessarily in alignment or in accordance with like higher self. And you have to take the time to assess, you know, what direction you're taking and look at things from both sides. Um, and maybe you can end some, some negative karmic patterns here and, uh, and evolve and, and grow. Like I said, this is a very transformative card in a way. Okay, so I've shown you guys the Rider away at Smith, Two of Wands, face it front, uh, where he's looking out over his land and, and surveying his land, seeing what resources are at his disposal and, and making plans and all the possibilities and, and all that. I think that's a beautiful way to represent this card. I also really, really love the, the simplicity of the Marseille Two of Wands. If you look at, you know, where the, where the two wands come together, there's, there's six, like a six-petaled flower right here in the center, um, which is beauty. You know, the number six even is harmony and, and Tiferet is beauty and, and all those things. Um, so literally where the two come together is is beautiful and harmonious. Uh, and then the, the flower up at the top, um, or at the top of both ends really, is a, is a seven-petaled rose. Um, so, you know, you're heading towards this place of activating your, your, your chakras and opening yourself up and opening up your energetic self. And yeah, love that. Okay, my all-time favorite Two of Wands card there's really not a lot of Two of Wands card that I love, 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 but this is totally one of them. This is from the Terror of the Holy Light. <laughs> uh, and what she does here is beautiful. She has these, these two different rays of light coming from the sun, showing the two ways that this solar universal energy um, can act upon us, can act upon matter. Um, and she uses the metaphor really in the book of how they act upon like how, how the sun acts upon vegetation, you know, it encourages growth and, it, and it's necessary. But then on the other hand, it can be destructive. It can rot things. It can destroy things. So you get those two, those two aspects that we're, that we're talking about in the two of wands displayed so, so beautifully and perfectly. You know, she really is showing the two ways that this this solar force, this universal um, Ace of Wands force or energy affects matter in general, though, you know? It can be this this friction, this pain, this discomfort, this stress, definitely stress, um, even wrath, all, all those sorts of things. And then on the other hand, it's, it's warmth, it's compassion, um, it's light, and it's love, and it's, it's even reconciliation. Uh, yeah, isn't that just a, a powerful way to, to look at the Two of Wands? I think this card is really, really interesting too. It looks a little bit like the Rider Waite Smith card in a way. Um, this is the, the Two of Wands from uh, Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot. Uh, and you can see him, there's this look on his face where he's just like, oh, what do I do? He looks kind of sad. He's still looking out um, upon the world, but there's this sense of, of melancholy there. Uh, you know, where do I go? What did I get myself into? So I love, love, love that card too. 
This is an interesting one. This is from um, the Fiorentine Minchiati, and this is their Two of Wands. Uh, most of their, their cards are pips. This one is decorated, though, and what I love about it is you get that, you know, that beautiful ribbon, in this case, where the two wands come together, um, but below it you see uh, animals and, and material matter life kind of stuff, um, and then when they, they the ones separate again up at the top here, you have this like this angelic winged figure. Um, so I think for me personally, anyway, it really gets at that, um, you know, loftier goals versus um, lower impulses and and transforming that into into higher aspirations kind of thing. Um, I think it's really interesting that in in several decks, uh, the the figure on the card is much more childlike like this is the um what's the name of this deck this is the giovanni vachetta 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 whatever and you can see he's like this this younger sort of person holding the two wands um and then i pulled this one too from the timeless tarot that that little girl watching two fish um and i think that that childlike aspect being brought into this card is really cool because it makes you realize you're at the beginning and it's uh, it's scary and and you're you're young in the situation now this is from the the navigator's tarot and this is another one that i see cards sort of depicted like this very often especially when they're more golden dawn um, or thoth based where you get that dominion over over others uh, which is definitely an aspect of this card whether you look at it as um, mars in aries or sun in aries like like i choose to do and like tarot of the holy light does with the solar rays <laughs> can still be getting at the same meaning, even though they have completely different astrological correspondences. Um, but I like that it, it talks about, you know, this, this person who is in control of, of where he's going. Um, you know, he's come through that and other people down here are, are responding to that. They're looking to him, you know, for guidance and for understanding of, of the path that may be ahead of them too. And I think it, it really does raise a lot of very interesting questions, um, not just with cards that are depicted like this, but with, with any of them. You know, how, how much do you subject your, yourself to the will of another? Or, or also, how, how strongly do you subject your own will, your own control over others? You know, how strongly is that, that, that force of whether it's that universal fire force um, or the force of, of another person? You know, is it going to destroy you or is it going to motivate and, and enliven you and invigorate you and inspire you and all that good stuff? All right, just a few more. This is the uh, mother piece, Two of Wands. Totally love this card. So she is uh, having a vision of uh, basically of, of how to create fire with her, with her two wands there. It was beautifully done. But she's, she's really planning what, what's going to happen. She's structuring, she's, you know, envisioning, envisioning this, this possibility and how wonderful it's going to be to make some fucking fire. <laughs> now, this is my, my two of wands from, from my own deck that I made, the Michelle Tarot. <laughs> and um, let me get a little closer. It's hard to see in the camera, I think. There is this, like, black serpent that's just busted out of his egg and is moving from the darkness up into the light more or less so i like that it's almost this continuation of this seed that birthed in the ace of wands and now you're moving through the confusion of this path um through the dualities uh and onto the next step where you really create um and i also like that it's, it's a reference to this this kundalini energy sort of awakening and, and learning about itself understanding both sides in order to transform. Okay, this is actually probably one of my favorite Two of Wands. It's really freaking hilarious. This is the Two of Wands from the Solabusca Tarot. Um, yeah, check him out. I'm gonna kinda zoom in on his crotch for a second. Can you see that? This poor guy has like really enlarged testicles. Can you see that? <laughs> so I think, you know, this is a, a really fascinating tarot deck. Um, I'm still working through it and trying to, to figure things out for myself and, and studying it. Um, I honestly have no idea 
what the intention of this image is really supposed to be. But for me, it, it kind of makes perfect sense. You know, it, it shows this, this pain, this discomfort, really, right? Um, that I'm sure having enlarged swollen testicles feels like, I can't say from personal experience. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you got big balls and you can push through and move on. I think this card is friggin' hilarious, actually. Uh, and it, it kind of makes, makes perfect sense. He's still carrying the two wands and they're crossed in the center. And, you know, look at where he's looking. He's like, he's on a fucking mission and he's like powering through. <laughs> This is uh, the same card, just colored a little bit differently from uh, uh, Solibuska Revisited, the, that Terra by Seven one. Big balls. Gotta have big balls to get through the two of wands. So some correspondences for me, anyway, this card is 11 to 20 degrees, or 10 to 20 degrees, however you want to look at it, um, of Aries, ruled by the sun, sun in Aries. It's like March 10th through March 20th, uh, like 6.30 a.m. in the morning. A lot of these come from, uh, from Pappas, his, uh, his, his correspondences to different times of day and, and the moon phases and all that sort of stuff. And it's also, you know, Kabbalistically, it is Chokmah in Absolute, that, um, that fiery world. So that ought to do it for the two of wands, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time with the three. <laughs> Bye.